Good morning to everyone present today in this hearing. My name is Antonio Rejola. I'm the president of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, and I am the rapporteur for Indigenous Peoples. Before we start, um, just wait a second to share the screen so I can make the presentation. This hearing is within the 179th period of sessions. We have a virtual hearing due to COVID, and this hearing is about this, the situation of human rights of cross-border indigenous peoples in the pandemic in Ecuador, Colombia, and Peru. This hearing was requested by a collective of civil society organizations. I'm not going to mention all because there are a lot, but we are working with cross-border indigenous peoples in their countries. We have present the situation. Afterwards, the commission will have and the civil society will have 30 minutes to make reference to the comments made by the commission on all the topics that you want to mention. We have first Vice President Julia Mantilla here, Flavia Piovesan, second Vice President, and Esmeralda Rosemena. Only women to listen to you. Also, I'm joined by Soledad Garcia. He is the rapporteur for economic, social, environmental, and cultural rights, and the staff of the executive secretariat that follows up the situations in the countries regarding what we're going to mention, and the, the rapporteur for indigenous peoples. And I believe that all the staff of the Special Rapporteurship are present here today. And thank you for making this hearing uh, possible. Also, Maria Claudia Pulino, the Executive Secretary, is here as well. You will see in on screen that we have interpretation and subtitles. So for those of you who need to use this service, you have to click on icons on your screen. Please. Keep your cameras on for safety reasons and turn your microphones off when you're not speaking because sometimes we have an interference and we are not able to listen to the Without further ado, I will give the floor to the civil society for 30 minutes. Go ahead. We have a timer that is to register the time it is running now it's going to start i will give you another floor good morning commissioners of the commission special rapporteurs members of the executive secretariat um, colleagues of the present organizations my name is Sophia Harim from amazon world and it's an honor to tell the Commission the serious situation uh, lived by cross border indigenous peoples um, to the omissions of the states of Ecuador, Colombia, and Peru, as they do not comply with their duty to guarantee the security in the different regions. Today, we're going to tell human rights violations of Amazon indigenous peoples that live in the border of different countries consider that their realities and problems have been have become visible historically, not only in the context of the pandemic. As organizations that work for the defense of human rights, we can say that in the fulfillment of the duties of these states, is expressed in the violation to the uh, guarantee of territories due uh, to previous con and informed consent, right to a health environment, nature, water, health, education, cultural identity, among others. That's why we confirm that today in cross-border indigenous peoples do not have access to dignified uh, human, human conditions. The risks have increased due to the proliferation of extensive activities, station, 
and the privatization of their territories, as well as uh, the presence of an armed conflict that has been silenced diplomatically. These problems are co causing problems of um, these possessions that affect the and identity of these peoples. In the context, we want to relate the historical context of this period as in the application of standards and human, uh, to protect human rights, the states follow a limited um, comprehension of their um, of their powers that do not acknowledge ancestral knowledge. That's why we consider that the Commission has been a key actor to overcome these limitations, and it should call on the three states their political will to generate coordinate efforts in the process of integration or dealing with um, migra uh, migration, for example. In these hearings, our my colleagues will provide clear information about the shared reality um, for these peoples in the three countries. I will now give the floor to Adolfo Chavez, coordinator of um, foreign relations that will make reference to the historic context of cross-borders indigenous peoples. Good morning to everyone present, to reporters, members of the commission, and those present here today to tell what is going on in the region. From the point of view of the coordinator of indigenous organizations of the Amazon, we want to tell you that you have the responsibility of following up closely what's occurring within the states where the COICA is a fundamental part of uh, government. We want to tell you the actions that have been carried out within the COICA, the Amazon Basin, have been murders and that worries us indigenous peoples. The other important topic that does not leave aside, cannot be left behind, is the disappearance of persons. There, are, there was a murder, uh, women are murdered, and and this affects the communities that live in the Amazon Basin. The states, through their different agreements, also carry out agreements with transnationals for oil exploitation. There are oil spills that have increased in the last years such as in Ecuador, in Peru, and other regions uh, of the Amazon Basin. What are indigenous people going through? We are living the, going through, we are suffering the non-previous consultation that is key for the application of Agreement 169, and especially the creation of the United Nations. Those rights, states should comply with them. They are left aside by heads of states, by the governments in each of the countries. As a result, there are political persecutions, as I mentioned before, the murder of human rights defenders. This 
There is great concern for us indigenous peoples, so we are asking, what have we done? Who will exercise those rights in our country? Indigenous peoples are also going through a very difficult situation due to COVID. had 2,200,000 confirmed cases in the Amazon, in the Coica. We have 57,000 cases, confirmed cases of persons who have died and they are now increasing fast in Brazil within the Amazon. Every day, 2,000 persons die. Half of them belong to indigenous peoples. So this great concern shows that there should be a call on the states when they they establish relations uh, or they ask for loans to the to other countries they are not taking into account the protection of the indigenous peoples in the amazon basin so reporters commissioners we want to tell you about our concern we want to inform you and our brothers and sisters will give you further details about this. This is what we can share from about the COICA, which is of great concern. Thank you. My name is Mario Peralto in the, from the Picomacho Department to us, indigenous peoples, this situation of the impact of the reconfiguration of the armed actors everything that has to do with the Pico Major region. We are on both sides. So to us, the situation, what is going on on the Colombian side in the Puto Major region, we have suffered difficult situations armed actors and the public armed forces have violated our rights since February and March a leader was murdered we keep on facing the situation the armed conflict in the border which affects indigenous peoples in the Ecuador. This is a difficult situation, the lack of acknowledgement of the states to the actions of indigenous protection in this region, our rights are being violated. Recently, the Ministry of Defense of the Ecuador has stated that the indigenous guard that is part of an organization, they, they put us at great risk to us. This is very complex to develop 
and the defense of our territories. Since September, through the early alert 040, we have presented several complaints. The indigenous people has been exposed in Puerto Asís who have suffered serious situations for indigenous leaders and there is no action carried out in order to protect us. The Siona peoples has also registered several harassment acts and violent acts. What I'm saying is taking place in the Siona peoples. There was a dispossession, displacement, murders that is taking place in the other Quichuas and other um, peoples that live near the Putumayo. The lack of compliance uh, with the peace agreement that the government has signed wants to make visible the conflict that exists. The state of Ecuador says that nothing occurs on the in the Ecuador, so it's very important for the commission to know about the situation of cross-border indigenous peoples. Each part wants to hide the situation. In Colombia and Ecuador, the same situation is going on. So we want you to understand that we are cross-border uh, peoples and we need the support of all of you to keep on living. Thank you. Sí, bueno, bueno, buenos días. Mi nombre es Rider Paina. Good morning. My name is Rider Panquina Estequas. I'm the um, principal counselor or uh, or consultant of UNA Association. Thank you for this hearing because it's very important for us. We are the Agua indigenous people from Colombia. We are the cross-border people. We are located in the Department of Tupumayo in Nariño and in, the Ecuador, and in, in Ecuador in several provinces. Uh, we are an indigenous people and we are a binational people. We are conducting a process that includes the four organizations of the family Agua that represents both uh, people from Colombia and from uh, Ecuador. And these territories that are part of the border are strategic uh, to the actions of uh, lawful and illegal armed groups operating in the region. This situation um, has uh, made that all these peasant and indigenous peoples in the region are vulnerable. We uh, are victims of threats, harassment, massacres, murders, and we see as several violations of human rights. We are undergoing a very difficult situation after 2016 when the peace process uh, began. We should be implementing the, peace, implementing the peace process right now, but what we see is a change in the armed conflict. 
and we see that there are several uh, illegal groups and we see that there is uh, many uh, conflicts for the territory in those border areas. Last year, in August, we sent a report to the Commission. In the report, we uh, mentioned the violations of human rights that occurred. And we believe that the precautionary measure that we have for this situation uh, is not being uh, respected by the national government. The, um, and at the same time, we have documents uh, by the Constitutional Court. We have uh, 620, among others. But all those measures are just measures, but they are not being complied with. And we can say that as, as of 2020, during the pandemic, we are seeing um, that 35 uh, indigenous colleagues have been murdered uh, in this middle of the pandemic, we are living in a very complex situation. Apart from the disease, uh, the armed groups are operating and we are at a high risk. I would like to mention some of the issues that we are dealing with here in Colombia. Thank you very much. Madam President, I would like now to talk on behalf of the Community Council uh, of the Nations Yogapan of Ecuador. It includes 700 uh, inhabitants and we have 1,500 inhabitants in Peru. We are in the border between Ecuador and Peru. This time, I will, I will talk about uh, the Amazon forest in uh, Ecuador. Even though we, what we see here is that the state has been absent always, but we see that this was worse during the pandemic we have suffered the state's neglect and also the pressure of legal and illegal armed groups. We are also suffering from extract, uh, extractivist activities. We are at a high risk and the survival of our peoples is being threatened. The confinement has been an excuse for states in order not to comply with their duty to take care of indigenous peoples. They have complied with legal international uh, human rights agreements and La propia medicina en este caso, bajo nuestro propio derecho a la autonomía y la autodeterminación. In order to respect our right to autonomy and self-determination. But those activities 
face several barriers. Since states did not allow to communicate with our peoples in the borders because the borders are militarized. They are full of militars. So in order to reach other communities, uh, we couldn't do it. We couldn't uh, send food or medicines to other communities in the border. So basically, um, this situation uh, creates a very important risk. We are very concerned because of this second wave that is coming. In Ecuador, we see that indigenous peoples in the Amazon area suffer most of the casualties. But there is no public policy on the part of the states regarding vaccination. We don't know when the vaccines will reach the communities. For example, they say that there are two uh, groups of vaccines that will be delivered, but we don't know when. So we will have to continue with our own knowledge and our own traditions. We are in a situation that is worse than before. Uh, peoples in voluntary isolation are being fully neglected. And the oil industry is always make, uh, putting pressure on them. So we call upon the commission to address our requests. There is no policy. And we believe that cross-border peoples should be able to move, not in a massive way, but we can help our brothers and sisters across the border. But the state of Peru and the state of Ecuador have not even discussed this possibility. So this requires urgent measures because we know that we are we, because we are expecting a second wave of COVID-19 because many people of our communities are dying and we don't know what's going to happen. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to our colleague, De Ortio. Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Jorge Perez. I'm also the uh, president of the Association of Western Indigenous Peoples. My brothers and sisters have uh, shared a lot of information and I would like to share with you some uh, details regarding our local community. Indigenous peoples in Peru and in Colombia uh, have been facing issues related to health and destructive activities, uh, especially the pollution of the water sources. This became worse in 2020 and in 2021. So, Right now, we are having a lot of issues regarding health care and the role of uh, destructive activities. During the lockdown, we have had uh, social confinement measures, but the extractivist uh, companies are still working in a and they have been degrading forests and attacking indigenous peoples. So we are undergoing a very complex situation. However, the state has not taken concrete actions. 
indigenous peoples in the border in Ecuador and the Peru have been uh, those who were uh, more um, most affected by the pandemic. There are illegal activities that are being developed in the areas where we live. We saw the activities, but we lacked the capacity to face, especially because of the level of infection and the fear at the time. The collapse of the health system in Peru and Ecuador. We see there has been uh, that the there has been a collapse of the health system in urban areas. And as a result, indigenous peoples decided to uh, resort to the ancestral knowledge and traditional knowledge that help us survive. And it's so important to mention that indigenous peoples are not just waiting. We have try to talk with the government in the middle of the pandemic in order uh, to implement an intercultural health plan that is quick so that they can reach those places that are more isolated. In the case of Peru, we uh, have been able uh, to achieve some things, for example, the air transport has been able to send some food and medicines to some isolated areas, but it has not been enough. And in 2021, the plan to send food and medicines to the Amazon region has not been uh, implemented yet, and that is a concern. So we demand that the state is notified so that they continue with the plan for the Amazon. So they provide intercultural health care for indigenous peoples. The vaccines will not reach indigenous peoples until next year, according to our estimates. So we will have to deal with the pandemic throughout the year. So we see a total neglect by the state. Regarding the indigenous peoples in voluntary isolation, we saw we see a great danger. They are located uh, in areas far away from urban areas, but we see that there is higher pressure by. Uh, unlawful activities, including drug trafficking, hunters, and also um, mining activities, illegal mining activities. So we want to have a health control wall in the communities that are around the territories of the peoples that live in isolation so that these communities that are near to these peoples in isolation are not a threat to peoples in isolation. But we don't see that this measure has been taken. So peoples in isolation are a serious risk because of the pandemic. So we would like that the commission call up, calls upon the state of Peru to take measures to establish a health control around the territory of peoples in isolation. It has also been uh, mentioned that there is an issue with the Wampus Nation. Basically, they have reported that the operators of the Geopada company have tried to enter their territories during the pandemic. They have um, 
ignore all the health controls and all the protocols that are requested. So this is also a serious threat and the government should be notified so that any oil activities in the Wampi territory is stopped because this, nations, this nation does not agree and does not want oil activities to be implemented in their territory because of the pollution caused in the past. In addition, they report uh, forestry activities. And this is also related to the market in Ecuador and the market in China. So there is no control or oversight mechanism. And there is no management plan for the extraction of balsabur. And that creates also a risk for the indigenous peoples in the territory, territory Wami. And we also see that there are several organizations that are reporting the same fact that is occurring in the border of Ecuador and Peru. We see that forestry activities are being carried out. And this affects the forests and the operators or those who are extracting the wood are spreading the disease. And we see a lack of presence of the state in this area. So the state should be notified uh, that they should implement the Amazon plan and to install it or to implement it in all places regarding healthcare. And uh, we agree to intercultural healthcare measures. We need to work with the government of Peru and Ecuador, but they are not doing this. But before entering, they have to give us information and they are not complying with that duty. So in summary, I also would like to say that our brothers from Joar Nation, they are saying their, their Achuar students are not going to school. They are not following uh, school classes and online classes cannot be conducted in the forests. So we also see a violation to the right to bilingual intercultural education. And many peoples in Peru are having the same problem. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. My name is Maria Spinoza for the Organization for Human Rights. And just to conclude with what our brothers have mentioned, in the community other in the cities, the states were, were implementing confinement measures. The most more than just people were confined. As my colleagues have mentioned, the pandemic has been the excuse for the absence of the state to be increased. And the absence of the state, that nation state notion. So to us, the first conclusion is that the Colombian, Peruvian, Ecuadorian states do not recognize in a voluntary way the transnational conditional and binational conditional of indigenous peoples. The state, not even within their territory, what they consider their territory, are providing the attention and protection for the indigenous peoples. That's why we want to call on 
the Commission to the Rapporteur on Indigenous Peoples to pay special attention to this issue. The states of Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru progress regarding public policies to guarantee the extractivism, uh, trading activities, uh, militarization of the borders. They do not make any progress in the protection of indigenous peoples. There has been a huge setback regarding uh, the right to prior consultation and there have been attempts to dismantle the guarantees that exist in Colombia and Peru. As the only state voice, uh, response, we see the closure of the borders. Certain peoples such as the Siona have not been able to move freely in their territories that are of a central use and belong to them. As my colleagues have mentioned, in order to access certain elements to combat the COVID, they have found obstacles illegal armed actors related to drug trafficking and there has been an increase regarding the control of the territories as well as my colleagues from Colombia and Peru were mentioning in the cross-border regions the Putumacho region there have been a serious of actions such as the forced recruitment of children and um, adolescents, also uh, the imposition of control and schedules to the communities and different um, restrictions to their mobility as well. For example, in terms of struggle ceremonies, that are carried out early in the morning. So the situation of cross-border indigenous peoples within this context of state absence and lack of cross-border control is uh, becomes worse due to the pandemic. Today, we do not know how many persons in the communities have been infected, we cannot determine if they have been, if they have initial strains of the virus, we don't have any data. And also regarding vaccination, we do not know when vaccines are going to arrive. There has not been a clear process of information for the peoples about the vaccines, what are the consequences of the vaccines, and the response of most indigenous peoples is, I'm not going to get vaccinated. There's a series of lack of information, of fear, and this uh, state pattern is being repeated. The people is not being taken care of with an intercultural approach. And states do not take into account the consultation with the indigenous peoples. Taking this into account, we have four requests to the commission. First of all, in 2019, you presented a report on the indigenous and tribal peoples of the Panam Amazon region. We want that report to be updated. Taking into account the situation of cross-border indigenous peoples the requesting organizations want to, are committed to uh, contribute to the collection of uh, information because we believe this is the opportunity to put on the table 
the discussion with the states the need of the binational of the cross-border situation and the state nation does not respect indigenous peoples. Second, several precautionary measures uh, that were requested should be granted for And also there has been the lack of compliance with previous precautionary measures. Also, we want uh, a call on for a uh, discussion panel with the states of Peru, Colombia, and Ecuador in order to look for alternatives. Finally, as commission, we want you to express your concern for the events we have presented today so that the states provide a timely and fast response in the context of the COVID, but especially a violence and st state absence. Thank you. Thank you. Please stop sharing the PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. We didn't want to interrupt you because you have a very coordinated presentation. Thus, you spoke for 45 minutes. The commission now will make comments and ask questions. And depending on the remaining time, we will be able to uh, make comments on what we say, but we have to finish the meeting on time because we have other meetings. I will now give the floor to my colleagues. I usually give the floor to my colleagues, but as rapporteur on indigenous peoples, I want to start. Now we have worked on the rapporteurship. I will start. First of all, I want to thank the presence of each of you, those of you present here today. I know that for many of you, it's very difficult to access the internet in the different territories. And I'm glad that you were able to do so. There have we didn't have any connectivity issues, which is something that usually happens when we meet with indigenous peoples. As the last uh, representative mentioned uh, regarding the report, the commission has worked on the Pan Amazon report, and that includes several topics that you have stated today. For example, the condition of cross border indigenous peoples, mainly Pan Amazon peoples, the violations of the states in order to coordinate in a bilateral way in order to establish cooperation for the uh, Amazon uh, peoples, the duty of the state of, of being present. And that duty is to protect the integrity of the indigenous peoples, to protect them from the uh, presence of third parties that do not belong to those territories not only because of the illegal extractive industries, um, but also because of the presence of military um, groups. Many of the topics mentioned in these hearings are part of that report as recommendations to the states and the commission within the context of the COVID has insisted on these recommendations. Also, you know that last year the commission after the pandemic was declared in the continent, issued uh, the resolution 12020 regarding human rights and pandemic. The commission is aware of the differentiated treatment the pandemic has for uh, vulnerable groups. It has a specific recommendations regarding indigenous peoples, as many of the issues you have mentioned impact uh, indigenous peoples in particular, but we issue recommendations to the states and we also want to restate the duties of the state to provide information on the pandemic uh, for the indigenous peoples to respect the, the contact with the initial contact with those uh, peoples that have been self-isolated. We want to support the initial contact and self-isolations. We are aware 
that the impact of the pandemic is of great concern due to the effects the contagious infection may have in uh, people's the initial contact. If measures are not implemented, this may end in the uh, displacement or the disappearance of uh, peoples. We have recommended states to increase the protection of human rights for the indigenous peoples within the context of the pandemic, taking into account the issues you have mentioned, which are cosmovision, traditional viewpoints, and the cultural identity that you have mentioned, also the traditional indigenous medicine that is key, not only for the survival of the peoples, but this is also a contribution for the Western medicine. There is a need for indigenous people to access health, state health, but also there should be a coordination with uh, the traditional medicine and be aware of that medicine. We have called on states to refrain from legal initiatives or developments of extractive uh, act activities in within the context of the pandemic. It's not possible to carry out prior consultation, informed consultation in the context of isolation and pandemic. We have called on the right to grief focused on indigenous peoples, uh, grief uh, of those persons uh, that died due to COVID, the right to grieving regarding indigenous peoples. We have also made visible the increase of harassment and murder um, that uh, human rights defenders suffer, but especially indigenous um, leaders. We have made this situation visible. We have developed different dialogues with the states about situations. We are concerned about this and the situation in several uh, countries such as Colombia. We have closely followed the situation, the precautionary measures, the One Piece uh, peoples, Chor peoples, and we also share your concern and we have talked to the states about the need uh, for a coordinated viewpoint with cross border indigenous peoples and take into account that condition. All the difficulties the states may face, they have sovereignty in their territory. We understand that, but we call on states and we take into account your statements in order to coordinate when it comes to cross-border peoples. This is a complex situation. You have mentioned that there's a closure of the borders and the lack of possibility for cross-border peoples to go from one country to the other, but this uh, closure of the borders due to health conditions or health crisis, we understand your request. And in that sense, we want states uh, to be coordinated in this sense in order to prevent further uh, infections. But there is also a need for the indigenous peoples to move in their territory. You have mentioned the environmental impact, the risks, the consequences this has for indigenous peoples. We have closely followed the oil spill in Ecuador and the increase of illegal activities, you have pointed out not only illegal uh, crops, but also the deforestation, the illegal deforestation that affects the wealthy people. And there are many situations monitored by us. Last year in the special rapporteur on indigenous peoples, we have had meetings with many of you present here today we have made an effort to establish a direct um, dialogue with indigenous peoples without intermediaries. That has been really important. And this year we're going to continue doing so in order to listen uh, to you about the situation that affects your human rights. And we take down notes, uh, we took down notes last year and we also issued a release, um, the statement made by COICA and other organizations. So 
that the states in a coordinated way take care of the impacts of the pandemic on the indigenous peoples, especially for those indigenous peoples in self-isolation. Having said that, I will now give the floor to my colleagues. I would like, you have mentioned about initiatives carried out by the indigenous peoples to through the press, we have heard uh, about different initiatives, for example, the use of traditional medicine for the prevention and treatment of COVID. I think that it would be really important for you to share in detail some of those initiatives and best practices in this regard. I think that these moments are important to uh, present complaints, but also to share best practices, uh, such as the initiatives carried out by the indigenous peoples, as well as the dialogue with the states in this regard. And it would be great if you could share with us um, these initiatives. Also, your opinion about the importance or uh, you what you think about the protocols, about informant prior consultations? We know there are protocols in this regard. What's the importance you uh, give to this and what's the relation with the states you have dialogue with? We are aware of these concerns. We have followed up the topics you have mentioned. We are worried about this issue. Thank you for the information. But we also want to know your opinion on best practices, taking into account the self-determination uh, law, but also the dialogue with the states in order to uh, replicate it. And we take down notes of the four requests that you have mentioned. We believe these are very important. I can speak on behalf of the whole commission Undoubtedly, we take down notes of the pending precautionary measures. As reporter on the indigenous peoples, I am aware that there are pending precautionary measures of the peoples that are participating in this hearing. So I will request these precautionary measures are given priority as they have been waiting for several months. We have an initiative to follow up the other precautionary measures. We have had uh, working meetings with the states. And regarding the other uh, issues, we take down notes, what you have mentioned about the update, uh, uh, about updating the Pan uh, Pan Amazon region report. That's very interesting. And I think that the initiative is quite important. This is not something I can decide alone, but we take down notes and these are interesting proposals that the commission can analyze and maybe we can uh, implement them in the future. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Julissa Mantilla, first Vice President of the Commission. Thank you, Madam Pres President. I would like to thank you for being here today and also I would like to thank all the persons of the different territories that are following uh, the hearing. As the President has said, the Inter-American Commission pays a lot of attention to the contributions that you have made. I have questions and if we don't have time today, maybe we can have a conversation later. Uh, I would like to talk about my first uh, rapporteurship that is of older persons. You have described the murders of several female leaders and their grandchildren. Uh, I don't know if you have a specific information regarding the impact that the COVID situation is having on older persons of each of the indigenous communities, because I know that they have a very important role in your communities. Also, I would like to ask you uh, about this, about sexual violence, threats, and specific cases of sexual violence against female leaders. You might have detailed information in this area. And the third question has to do with the other rapporteurship that is uh, for persons in human mobility. And I would like to know the impact 
that are caused by domestic di displacement uh, because of the COVID, etc. And also, I would like to ask you about the militarization of the borders. The Commission is concerned uh, about the impact of the militarization of the borders because we know that it had an it is having an, a specific impact on indigenous peoples. Uh, I know that you were talking about the impact of the armed conflict in Colombia, and that's why we are concerned regarding displacement and militarization. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mantilla. I would like to give the floor to second Vice President, Commissioner Piovesan. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet everybody, and I'm really thankful for sharing with us all these contributions and talking about your challenges. I have three questions. The first is key and has to do with the uh, traditional perspective on health and also we have the tradition, uh, the uh, tribal or cross-border activities. And I would like to know if there are joint efforts of international cooperation when it comes to COVID-19 or because of the murders of those 35 leaders that have been reported or if there is any coordination because of the serious impacts created by extractive activities. Is there any attempt, attempt of international cooperation between the states of Ecuador, Colombia, and Peru regarding these challenges? And my second question has to do with the COVID-19. Madam President talked about the resolution one slash 2020 with the specific recommendations. And I would like to know more about the protocol for the prevention of the COVID-19 in uh, the territories of indigenous peoples in Ecuador. Do you have uh, national plans of prevention that include the intercultural gender-based dimension regarding healthcare? And my third question, is related to the leaders and the violence uh, exerted by our armed groups and the environmental impact as well. In this universe of systematic violations of human rights, are there any effective responses or are we again reporting impunity, the lack of responses by the states? Are there any good practices or uh, good perspectives? And these are responses by the just by justice or by the justice systems. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Esmeralda. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet you all. I would like to thank you for all the information that you have shared with us. As you see, we are all women colleagues and they have already mentioned many questions that we, for which we need answers. I would like to uh, make emphasis on my rapporteurships. We know that in this situation of the uh, search or research of armed conflicts, and we see that there is a recruitment of boys, girls, and adolescents. And you have, if you have data regarding the recruitment of children and adolescents, uh, we would like to have the figures, or if you have any documents or records of such situation. We also, uh, I would also 
like to ask you about the lack of presence or uh, the, the failure of the state to be there. So you have uh, reported that there is a violation of the rights of cross-border uh, peoples because the states are not there. So that is the reality that you have communicated to us. And I would like to second our president uh, in terms of the work the commission is doing. And my question in this regard is whether you, through the organizations that you have, have uh, communication channels with authorities in each of these states. What is the level of communication when you want to communicate the concerns that you have, the fact that states are not there and not that they are not fulfilling their duties? Um, we see that there is a situation of neglect a violation of their rights. And uh, this is responsibility of the states, Colombia, Peru, or Ecuador. So we see that there is a multilateral responsibility of the states. So we need to know if you have a communication with states. So if you don't, we, that is the request that you have. We should be a bridge or a communication channel. And I think that is the position of the rapporteur for indigenous peoples. Uh, to conclude, I would like to express my solidarity uh, to all of you because of the recent uh, martyrs. I know that a female leader was mother in March this year. I would like to express to all those who are listening to the hearing or that are following the hearing and have had the opportunity to connect to the hearing, to follow this hearing. I would like to express to all of them my condolences and my acknowledgement for your struggles. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Arosemena. I would like to give the floor to the Special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights of the Commission. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, everybody. I would like also to second the expressions of solidarity and I would like to say that I admire you for your resilience. Um, the Madam President already summarized all the actions of the commission and the commissioners also made very relevant questions. So I will be very short. And I would like to ask you some questions regarding some topics or issues that are connected to my rapporteurship. We see that there is a crisis regarding economic, social, cultural, environmental rights that is especially worse in the case of indigenous peoples. I'm really concerned for your situation. I would like to listen to you. We are trying to support the efforts made by the rapporteurship of indigenous peoples. And we would like to know the situation before and after the pandemic. I would like to know what happened with health services and education services, because those are the two points that you are always mentioning. Especially for cross-border peoples. Also, we would like to have more information regarding the Amazon plan that you have uh, mentioned several times um, for the commission and for the rapporteurship. It would be very useful to have that information. And regarding the situation of female leaders and human rights defenders, you know that the commission prepared a report, a specific report on indigenous peoples. And more recently, we have a report regarding uh, companies and human rights presented by the Special Rapporteurship in Economic, Social, Cultural, Environmental Rights, I would like to know 
if you are contacted uh, when the government takes measures and or implements plans regarding companies and human rights. Again, I would like to thank you and I would like to express my solidarity to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rapporteur. I now would like to give the floor back to the organizations. Please, I will be very strict with time. We have only 15 minutes because after that, the commissioners, we all have uh, different meetings. So you will have 15 minutes to answer the questions or to make any additional comments. That information that cannot be delivered now, you can send it in written. It's always important to receive first-hand information from indigenous peoples in order to be able to monitor the situation. I give you the floor for 15 minutes. I would like to talk about some concerns that you have mentioned, especially everything that has to do with the vaccination process. For us, the situation is uncertain. The states do not have answers. And we don't know. Uh, we know that some people decided not to get the vaccine and it is this clear what the benefits and consequences of the vaccine are. Because that is a reaction to the lack of knowledge or information that they have. Regarding the protocols that are there for the COVID-19, we as a nation are dealing with the prevention and also the containment, uh, especially with use uh, medicinal plants. And we try to help older, older persons, our grandparents, so that they can survive or they can prevent uh, the disease. We also prepare some uh, cure medicines, but basically, since there are no public policies that are uh, intercultural, we have our own autonomy responses within each of the communities because we don't have intercultural health public policies here. I also believe that we need to say that the closure of the borders, uh, especially affected cross-border peoples because they live in the same nation at both sides of the border. There was, of course, an effect or consequences of the closure of the borders for the society in general, but it was worse for the indigenous peoples. But we are seeing that oil activities and uh, mining activities did not stop in the borders. And we are seeing also that there is illegal transportation um, of products between the borders. The state has been there, but they have uh, implemented security measures or they have sent uh, police officers or security forces, but that's it. That is the way that they find to take care of the citizens or, but that is the only way in which the state is here. And that is a risk for us, we end up being the victims of any conflict. And regarding the communication between the states and the indigenous peoples, we have had the, uh, the possibility of communicating with the state because we have a precautionary measure. We are the beneficiaries of a precautionary measure, but they send people that do not have decision-making power and there are some agreements, but uh, the proposals made are not efficient. And 
basically we have communication and but we are the ones that make decisions because the state is not able to make decisions and regarding the borders it's important to say if there is even though there is an official closure of borders we see that the uh, borders are being permeated we have illegal cross uh, border uh, points and we see the unlawful mobility of persons from other countries and this is not only of indigenous peoples the state knows about these facts all the facts that we have reported have been presented before the state in 2020 and before. We have presented reports, we have presented requests, we have uh, gone to the media, but the response of the three states is the same. They do not present timely or effective measures or responses. And the closure of the borders was selective. So there was a closure of the borders for uh, human mobility, but it, oil activities were not stopped. The trucks that transport the oil are still uh, moving. Uh, the trucks that transport the uh, wood are still moving. So that was made a priority over the lives and the situation of indigenous peoples. There is also not a problem regarding the lack of information, but there is a lack of access to information because we have platforms or online platforms that do not work. And sometimes also the communities have no access to phones or to the internet. And we don't have information about the vaccine and therefore the lack of information creates resistance. We will send all the information in a report in which will be including figures or statistics and all the things that we have been discussing. We will commit to provide you more information uh, that is of interest for the different rapporteurships. Regarding older persons, we see that there is a differentiated impact uh, for those people. Um, many of the people who have died are older persons, uh, and that is a tremendous loss for us. I would like to say that we need to create urgent mechanisms of dialogue with states and that uh, states are not paying attention to the requests of the organizations and that's why important that the commission intervenes. In order to conclude, I wanted to tell you that indigenous peoples from Peru and Ecuador, we have created an initiative, uh, sacred basins, Cuencas Sagradas, for uh, the recovery of our traditional knowledge as well as the reproduction of that knowledge. In these times of pandemic, we have adopted several agreements with the state in order to reduce extractivist activities in the region that have affected life and the environment. In the Cuenca Sagrada initiative in cooperation with the partners, we have told the Peruvian state the immediate implementation, we have requested implementation of the Amazon plan that should be working in order to face the pandemic, this plan that is at risk the continuity of the indigenous peoples in the Amazon is at risk due to the spread of the infection. We request the commission to guarantee the continuity of the Amazon plan. Thank you. will now give the floor to 
our colleague Carlos Massabanda. I don't know if Sofia, Eduardo, maybe want to add uh, more information, make any comments. Carlos, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. I was turning my camera on. Good morning. I want to tell the commissioners that due to the lack of information, official information, and cultural data in relation to the number of cases in uh, the indigenous peoples in the Amazon, uh, several uh, partner organizations have established a monitoring program in connection with the COVID cases based on uh, PCR tests that were applied uh, for economic reasons and uh, other organizations that cooperated this has been of great help in order to monitor these cases and in order to provide humanitarian aid. So there are new protocol systems as the indigenous uh, brothers and sisters have mentioned. The situation is that since December, we have not been able to update the information because the, there is no PCR tests being carried out we used to update information every four days. And since December, we have not been able to do that as no PCR tests are being done, which shows there is a lack of registration of what is going on, record of what is going on in the indigenous peoples in connection with COVID. This hinders a proper monitoring and the application of uh, measures to prevent the infection from being spread. This should be taken into account and we should call the attention of the governments in these particular areas due to the conflicts that exist so that the PCR tests can be done uh, again to monitor the situation in connection to the COVID pandemic as new um, strains and variants are um, that spread more easily are uh, coexisting in the region. This will also um, allow us to think about the protocols, vaccination protocols under the circumstances that were mentioned to provide information about what uh, this vaccination is about, how it should be carried out in order to prevent the spread of the virus in the indigenous populations. Thank you. There's an important situation that has been pointed out by Jorge. And although there's a militarization of the borders, that militarization has not been useful to contain drug trafficking, not illegal uh, deforestation or illegal mining. This militarization has only been useful between uh, inverted commas, to the control of the activities of the indigenous peoples. And uh, it has uh, become an obstacle for their mobility in their own territories. Or the complaints of the, regarding the increase of illegal mining and deforestation. This has been done by the communities and the organizations. And we have not received uh, any response from any of the three states. The exploitation of balsa good and other uh, trees has led to the spread of the COVID and other uh, diseases that uh, were contained in the territories. And it represents an increase in uh, sexual violence and gender based violence. Women are indigenous women are do not have access to protection channels. It was already difficult for them to access this due to the distance and the lack of understanding uh, of the in, of an intercultural knowledge or the violence. This has become more complex. 
they have to travel long distances in order to file a complaint, usually they are not investigated and they are not protected. So we observe an increase in that type of violence and risks for indigenous women. You have one minute. We do not have more time. Uh, good morning, commissioners. I want to make a request. I know that the commission has expressed the regarding indigenous peoples, but the situation is of great concern in the border between Ecuador and Peru. There are cross-border peoples in an isolation situation that are not being protected in the uh, country of Peru or the country of Ecuador. In the case of Colombia, we are close to the territories and nothing has been done in order to stop the situation. So I, in this minute, I want to request to request both countries to be conscious about the extreme vulnerability of these peoples amidst the pandemic. Thank you. We do not have more time, so we have to close now. I also want to thank, first of all, the presence of everyone here in this hearing, the effort of coordinating and collecting the information. The systematization of information is really important to us, and you have done a great effort so that uh, the peoples of different territories are present here today. So we want to thank you for this information. We we are be receiving any further information that you want to send together with uh, Commissioner Rosamena. We want to express our solidarity in general to all of you in these territories and who suffered the violation of human rights, but especially due to the death of the women woman leader and indigenous leaders in the territories. As Commissioner Mantisha mentioned, the situation of the elderly that spread their cosmovision and the traditions to the new generation. So it's very important for the survival of the cross-border indigenous people. So we want to express our solidarity. We take down notes of your requests we are going to analyze them with the commission and the executive secretary has uh, written to me in regard with the precautionary measures so they are um, solved quickly. We are available to continue having this dialogue, monitoring the situation as well. I send you my regards on um, behalf of the commission, please take care and we we'll see each other soon. I hope that in your territories and not through the screen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you.